Praise the Lord. This is a psalm for the day that is coming to you from the redeemed Christian Church of God in Abuja. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning to see another beautiful day. Thank you for the opportunities of life. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. Our psalm for the day is Psalm 133, verses 1 and 2, which reads, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the head, even Heron's head, and went down to the skirts of his garment. Praise the Lord. Today is our second day of studying this psalm. We shall continue from where we stopped yesterday as we consider how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We realize that the greatest act of unity is one that exists between, one of the greatest acts of unity is that that exists between a man and his God. In Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 6, Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 6, the Bible declares and affirms that God is the potter and we are the clay. God's power over the clay is absolute and unlimited. To be fulfilled in its purpose, the clay needs to yield or cooperate with the potter. The potter is all capable. He is all powerful, all present, and all knowing. Therefore, the clay cannot argue or oppose the will of the potter. The Almighty God supports this in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. That if they are willing and obedient, they will eat the good of the land. Success for the clay comes out of compliance by the clay to the desires of the potter. Again, in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, he said this to the prophet. Before I formed thee in the womb, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee and ordain thee a prophet unto nations. The potter can forge the clay into whatsoever shape or purpose he desires. So long as the clay cooperates to fulfill that purpose, so long shall it be successful in life. Whenever people with positive minds gather in unity, God's presence is made manifest there. This was what happened in the day of Pentecost. The Bible testifies in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, Acts 2 verse 1, that the disciples were gathered in one accord, in one place, in what one spirit. The unity of the brethren invited God's presence into their midst. And they spoke in tongues. Brethren, how are you in your family or in the organization where you work? Are you dwelling in unity and in love? If yes, then you are guaranteed to have God's presence following you. And the presence of God in your midst will ensure that your journey through life will be one of success and that is progress-driven. That was the assurance God gave to Moses in Exodus 33, verse 14. Verse 13 and 14. He promised that in unity with his presence, his, with that, he promised that in unity, his presence will go with the Israelites to guarantee that their difficult journey through the desert shall end up successfully. His presence will ensure that they made it to the promised land. Brethren, 
what is your life's journey? If you will go in the presence of the Creator, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and permit him to direct your path, you will have a glorious finish with him as your partner. The crooked paths of your life shall be made straight. Your journey will be more successful, and the mountains before you shall be made plain. You will not just exist in this life, but you will enjoy your existence. You will come to understand why the Bible testifies in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. Genesis 1, 31, that when the Almighty God looked at the works of his creation, he found them to be very good. Working in unity with God produces the best result. An African proverb says that clapping with one hand does not produce sound. You need two hands to clap for sounds to be produced. You need the cooperation of one another to produce great results in life. The Bible declares in Proverbs 27, 17, Proverbs 27, 17, that, an, uh, that as iron sharpens iron, so does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend. Therefore, to work in unity is to complement the assets and ability of one another, resulting in the achievement of better results. It is also why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to 12, that two working together is better than one. This is because when one falls, the other is able to lift up the fallen one. Examine your life today, my brothers and sisters, with regards to your family, your place of work, your, and the community in which you dwell, and see how you can improve the quality of your life by working in cooperation with God and with man. You will be glad you did, for the quality of your life will be so much improved. Furthermore, the Bible declares in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, that a three-point cord cannot be broken. Strength and stability are achieved through the unity of the three points of this cord, acting as one. A proverb says that there is safety in numbers that are united. I pray for you today, child of the living God, that you will apply wisdom to the conduct of your life and walk in unity with man and with God. In doing so, your life will bring into positive dynamics, into positive dynamics of success, progress, and fulfillment. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beards, even Aaron's, Aaron's beards. This is a description of the overflowing of God's blessings upon our lives. Yes, indeed, whenever we are united with God in this journey through life, our lives become greatly endowed for success. Again, my brothers and sisters, the Bible in Deuteronomy chapter Deuteronomy 32, verse 30 to 43, says that one shall chase a thousand, but two shall chase ten thousand. It is important to note that because of the cooperation between the two of them, two chases ten thousand instead of two thousand. An understanding of this mystery of life is a prerequisite for a purpose-filled life. In Psalm 1, 22 verse 1, Psalm 122 verse 1, the Bible declares that I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. The man is glad because of the beauty of going to worship God in the company of the brethren. We have already seen that in Acts chapter 2 verse 1, God's presence is made manifest when people act in unity and cooperate with one another. This is why we are encouraged to examine ourselves and to conduct our lives well. It is important, my brothers and sisters, that we guide and guard our behaviors so as to attract the presence of God and the cooperation of man in all that we do. May this be our portion 
In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the fact that you are our God and that you have sent us onto this earth to fulfill your purpose. Thank you for the ability to do so. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen.